Hi, this is Rabbi David Debo with another Devar Torah from the Beit Midrash of Midrashet Emunah Omanut. I have a rule. My Debar Torah are not political. But sometimes the politics of the moment illustrate a principle so perfectly that it really does lend insight into the Torah. I don't think the Torah is a Republican platform or a Democratic idea. I don't think the Torah recommends you vote for Bibi or Bennett. But it does help us understand what makes a Bennett or a Bibi more or less successful. Parshat Korach. This week's Parsha tells the story of an organized political rebellion against Moshe. Korach gathers a coalition of malcontents, different groups of people that have beef with Moshe. There were the firstborns who had lost their status to the Levites. There was Datan and Aviram from the tribe of Reuven who lost their leadership to Judah, and Levites who wanted to be Kohanim, and then Korach himself who thought that he should be the leader of the Levite clan of Kahat. They were united in opposition, not in some constructive ideal. The real purpose was to depose Moshe, not to accomplish something important, some important reform. Instead of some articulate point-by-point point plan of action, something Moshe could debate, perhaps learn from, take a suggestion, all they offered were slogans. Moshe was a real leader. He listened, he consulted, he was open to the honest suggestions made by the daughters of Slochad, and even to the upstart young prophets Eldad and Medad. But what response does a Moshe have to a slogan like, We are all holy, Kulam Kidoshim? Of course Moshe agrees with the principle. Moshe was the one who taught that we are a Mamlechet Kohanim, a Goy Kadosh, a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. But Kedusha is a subtle concept. We all possess Kedusha, but still there are levels of Kedusha. Some people, some places, and some uh, times are holier than others. We can create Kedusha by dedicating an object to the temple. We call that Hekdesh, making something holy. Hekdesh. And we do that for other people. When a couple marries, they designate each other as holy to the other, mm -hmm. as off-limits to everyone else, as designated alone in the world as a place of holiest intimacy. We call that Kedushin. But Korach wasn't interested in the unique relationship that Moshe had created with Hashem and with the people, a relationship forged of experience, both positive and negative. Korach argued that everyone was holy, everyone was special, and we know what happens when everyone is special. Because Korach was making a false argument, he held his coalition together not through shared ideas, but only through appearances, only through the faint superficial unity. The Gemara in Baba Kama Daf Samech Amud Bet tells the story about Rav Yitzchak, who was trying to teach Torah to Rav Ami and Rav Asi. Whenever Rav Yitzchak started teaching Halakha, Rav Asi would entreat him to teach Agadah, soft, sweet, moral ideas. So Rav Yitzchak started teaching Agadah, and Rav Ami would beg him to teach Halakha, well-defined, hard, raw, lawful rules. So Rav Yitzchak would switch to Halakha, and Rav Asi would complain. For all their complaining, nothing got done. And Rav Yitzchak gave them the following allegory. A man had two wives, one youthful and the other elderly. The younger wife wanted her husband to be exciting, dynamic, and active. She spent her time picking out those old white hairs that made him look old. His older wife wanted a husband who was settled, sagacious, and respected. She couldn't countenance his ski trips and jeans. She spent time picking out those offensive black hairs in order to make her husband look hoary and old. Neither embraced the actual husband, who was a unique combination of those traits. Instead, each spent her time getting rid of, canceling the things she didn't like. The result between the two, nimsakareach mikan umikan. They both got a bald husband. This week, Israel's government fell for the fifth time in five years. It was a strange coalition, which included right-wing settler interests and for the first time in Israel's history, Arab parties in the government. I was hopeful and appreciated Naftali Bennett's inclusive approach and desire to build bridges and unite the nation. But alas, the government could not agree to pass a law that had previously passed without difficulty or fanfare in all previous governments. It would have stripped the Israeli residences of Yehuda and Shimon of the civilian status they have enjoyed since these lands came back to Israeli hands. It seems the real reason Baram, Yeshatid, and Yamina and others sat together in the government was just to make sure Bibi Netanyahu was not to be reelected. But when it came to building a workable system for all the citizens of Israel, 
This government preferred to cancel rather than embrace what is. To Naftali Bennett's credit, he dissolved the government rather than allow the Israeli citizens of Judea and Shamron, of which I am one, to be legally plucked out. And so the government fell. Nimsa kareach mikan umikan. Korach kareach is bald and is also the name of the leader of the opposition who lends his name to this week's Parsha, Korach. May we learn to truly become a Mamlechet Kohanim v'goy kadosh, a nation that understands the nature of difference and learns to embrace it rather than erase it. Shabbat Shalom.